If you are a real estate agent and you are tired of cold calling, door knocking, paying for ads that flat out don't work, or just tired of not knowing how to generate leads, then this is the channel for you. We are four rock star agents who have come together to help fellow agents achieve financial freedom as well as location and time freedom. My name is Andy Hollis along with my partners Aileen Fountain. Together we have over 50 plus years experience and knowledge in the real estate and sales and training industry and we are hoping to pass that knowledge on to you. So let's get started. So thank you for that. So you closed a home a week since 2016 and in the business since 2014. 15 and started here not knowing anyone literally had moved here knew no one and needed to figure out how to do real estate so i did uh, i worked a full-time job for nine months along with real estate and i did real estate before work at lunch at dinner and evening and weekends and then was able to leap into full-time real estate so the way i built my business is through social media no paid ads, just organic, good old fashioned connecting with people. And so that's what I talk about a lot is how do we just connect with people? And we do it exactly how I just did in terms of calling your names out, mentioning Michael's hair, talking about Anne's cool glass frames, acknowledging that I've met Tim before. Those are all phenomenal, simple, yet difficult ways to connect with people. So we'll talk about a bunch of things here. I love question and answer. I love interactive. So if at any point during it, you want to poke and uh, I'll either put a pin in it, we'll talk about it, or we'll talk about it right on the spot. So uh, when I was doing, prior to real estate, I worked uh, that nine to five job. The job that I did was working at a blood center. And the deal was I needed to set five appointments a week to convert people from whole blood donations which is a very simple 15 minute process, blood out, done, right? They get a cookie, life's happy. To platelets, which is a two hour process. They take the blood out of your body, they put it through a machine, they put it back in your body. It's very scary. So my job was to call people who were whole blood and convert them to platelets. And my goal was five appointments a week. After a week and a half of doing the phone calls, I was setting five appointments a day. And the sales managers were like, what are you doing? How are you getting five appointments a day? And I said, well, I'm connecting with people. How do you do that? You're talking to them on the phone. And I was like, well, just listen to my stuff. And because I didn't know, I was like, I don't know. I just connect with people. <laughs> so we listened to my calls and I did things. If I were calling Jeff Morrill from Colorado Springs, I would say, hey, Jeff, this is Robin Mann from the Community Blood Center of the Carolinas. So moral mushrooms, is that your, is like, the, that's the same, is that how you say your name, right? <clears throat> I've heard it moral, I've heard it morale. We say morale. Morale. morale, however you say it. And so he would correct me, we would talk, right? So immediately I go in for a connection. I don't go in for calling to make sure that you're going to do platelets because that's a scary process and this whole deal, right? I'm looking for a means to connect. As soon as he opens his mouth, I have another clue. I'm looking for clues. Real estate is all about clues. Lead generation is all about clues. Clues, connecting, and then continuing. Those are the three C's that I work with. So clues, connecting, continuing that conversation. So that's really four. four. So what are clues can I get from, from Jeff? Morel mushrooms, we could talk about that for a minute. Does he even know what they are? What is the heritage of morel or moral? We can go into that. And then I'll circle back around. So Jeff, I noticed you're A positive. Did you know that they throw away 90% of the A positive blood that people donate? I had no idea. They do actually. So that was part of my script. And that's so funny. That was nine years ago. I still remember it. But you need to be an AB. You need to be a platelet donor because they'll actually use your blood. So I went in, I connected I gave him some information to educate him. Then I asked, does that sound important to you? Do you want your blood thrown away or do you want to actually use it? Great. Let's do this process. Sign him up. Boom. Right? So I would have just converted Jeff right now to platelets. Right? You would have done it. <laughs> I would have so, done it. Yes, you would have done it. <laughs> so looking for clues and everywhere you go and everything you do in lead generation is about clues, connecting, continuing that conversation, and then having the conversation. And that is effective communication. If I had called Jeff and said, hey Jeff, this is Robin Mann from Blood Center of the Carolinas. Do you want to get platelets? 
I'm not communicating. I am communicating, but I am doing it very poorly, right? If you go, if you go down to the core thing, what is the number one thing that they want? If this happens, everything else falls into line. To talk about themselves and then not just to talk about themselves, because Ty, if you just talk to me and the entire time, this is what I'm doing. Right. Talk and listen. Be heard. They want to be heard. Thank you, Ty. That's what I was looking for. The number one thing that people want in this world is to be heard. Go deep on that. Go way deep on that and think about that. If you're homeless, what do you need? You need a home. How do you, how do you get a home? You need to be heard. If you're at a doctor's office, what happens? You need to be heard. If you're dying or if you're celebrating, what do you want? You want to be heard, right? So as much as we can tie that into our business, boom, that's where the magic happens. If I called Tim up today and let him talk for 45 minutes and I did some active listening with him, ooh, that's great. Tell me more. I don't even have to say anything else, the whole conversation. Ooh, what else? Tell me more about that. Explain. Tim is going to leave that conversation thinking I'm the coolest person he's ever met. And I told him nothing about myself because I helped him feel heard. Think about your own personal relationships when they've had struggles. What's the basis of that? You didn't feel heard. They didn't feel heard, right? So how does this relate to real estate? How do we take this and make it about doing business? I don't pay for leads. I don't, I, I connect with people to get leads. As I said, 80% of my business, 85% of my business has come from Facebook. Prior to that, it was door knocking and open houses. I knocked out the open houses because I didn't like them door knocking. I can crush door knocking because it's the same thing as cold calling. It's about walking up to a door, looking at their wreath, looking at their dog flag, talking about the child that comes to the door. And it's about connecting with them. Every single way you do lead gen is about clues. And the clues are what clue can you find to connect with the person? Kathy Carter from Nashville, Tennessee. Oh my gosh, my daughter lives in Nashville. I lived in Clarksville for a while. Have you been to Clarksville? Of course. Everything I mean, so there's also a lot of free association in my brain. I am constantly searching those little algorithms, constantly searching. What can I do to connect with this person? So in doing that, tell me what I'm, what am I using? If, if right now we're all looking at Mike Ockert, what am I doing when I look at him? I'm looking at him. I'm listening to him. I'm looking at his background. I'm looking at his shirt. I'm looking at his hair. I'm, if I'm on the phone, I'm listening for his accent. If I called him and I know his address, I'm mentioning his address, right? So if you're doing cold calls of any capacity, find clues, connect Get to the business. And then how do you continue the conversation? The reason for the reason for your call is irrelevant, truly, because if I call you and you've just dealt with a crisis of some form, or you just received celebratory information of some kind, you do not care why I'm calling, right? Now, I do preface my husband. I am human. I don't do this all the time. I'm not good at this all the time. I do preface my husband and I, I will, he will pick up the phone and I'll say, I have to tell you why I'm calling and then I want to hear about you. Like I'll say, I do that a lot because I have a reason I'm calling that needs an answer now. And then we will get into what he wants to say. So think about this when you're, social media is the same exact thing. And I don't, do you guys use social media? If you use it, say yes or no, or Okay. And my, my other question is, are you using it well? Are you doing it correctly? If you have someone that's sending your stuff out and it's the same crap that Chuck and Jennifer and Brad is, are sending out, I can tell you right now, you're not doing social media well. You have, it has to be personal. It has to be engaging and it has to be the same exact thing. Connecting, continuing, making conversations. It's all about communicating with folks. So let's say right now I walk into this room. Y'all had never seen me before today, as many of you have not. And I say the first thing, Kathy does that beautiful introduction. And then I say, hey, I've got five listings right now. Here's the information on them. And then I leave. That is what we're doing in social media right now. And if that just slapped you in the face, I am so sorry. <laughs> but it's true. They don't care. They can go to MLS and see your listing. What they care about is the story. Hey guys, these people have been working on this house. I cannot believe the before and after of how they made this house ready for this for, for sale. Look at this lifestyle you could have in this backyard. And you expect you extrapolate on that, right? That is going to hit. 
Even that, though, is not going to hit if you're not part of a community. So a lot of people come into these community groups, a lot of realtors, and they do exactly like that. They vomit. Here's my open house. Here's my listing. Here's my sale. They're not communicating. You're literally just vomiting on a group. Our job is to go into the group and become a human. So I do a 22-day social media challenge. And in that challenge, that's what we do. Your job would be like some of the tasks are go into your local community group. That is an active group. It's not just a spam group. And comment on three people's posts. Go into your local community group and share a local business event or sale or something that's happening, right? Because that I am communicating. I am being of value. When I first started out to... to bring this home to how I brought it into real estate. When I first started out with real estate, I said I worked a full-time job. On my lunch break, I would go to this one group called Valentine Connection. Right now, it probably has 25,000 members, but back then it probably had 10. But at lunch, I would I, I was new to the area. I didn't know anyone. I knew nothing. But people would ask a question. What's the best Italian restaurant in town? I did not know because I was new to town. I did know how to look up Yelp reviews right? And I would go to Yelp and I'd be like, Hey, Pewitt, thanks for that question. I've seen that Mario's is supposedly the best place in town. I did not say I'd been there. I did not say I liked it. I said, supposedly it's the best place in town. Now Pewitt values me. He was heard, right? He said, Oh, that Robin man. So then three weeks from now, he asked a question about the pumpkin patch. I don't know. Or I go research. These are the three closest to our area. Now, again, I am in Pewitt's brain. We're not Facebook friends. He doesn't know me. But the next time I post in there, he's going to like my stuff, right? That is exactly how I built my business on Facebook. I became the mayor of groups. I made people feel heard. I communicated with them. Then I would pepper in questions. Hey, guys. If you were to say the best neighborhood in town in the five to $700,000 range it has a phenomenal social community, which one would you recommend? And you can add in there, I'm doing some market research for my clients who are moving here. You just told everyone you're a realtor without vomiting realtor on them. So the post comes up, hey, I'm looking for a realtor to sell my house. Who has seen those? Looking for a realtor to sell my house. Who do you recommend? Whoever wins those. I win them. I win them a lot, a lot. One, I win them because I'm in that group every single day. It's my job because you know what? It's my job. <laughs> and I'm in that group, loving on those people, talking to them, giving them suggestions, adding funny stuff, adding great information, sharing businesses. So when someone asks about a realtor, boom, they think Robin Man. Now, if that doesn't happen, if they don't recommend me, what I do is I message Arowana and I say, I'll, I'll message her on the word right there, Erwana. And I'll say something that's very unique to me, which this is something I of, often say. Erwana, I treat cl clients like family members that I like. I would love to be considered. Then I go to Erwana's page and I look her up and I find out something I can connect with. And then I message her and I say, oh my gosh, Erwana, I didn't know you're, I'm making this up because I don't know anything about you, Erwana, but I didn't know that you're from Kentucky. I have only been there once and it was so beautiful. They had tobacco barns and I'd never seen a tobacco barn in my life before. By the way, I'm a local realtor, closed a house a week since 2016. Please let me know. Uh, can I, I'd love to be of help to you. Please let me know. And I friend request her. My close rate on that is through the roof. There'll be a hundred realtors that have commented. I will win it. And I, it is, for me, it is a win. It's a game. It's a big game. I'm going to win that. So, Clues connect with those clues. Then we take it to the next conversation. Once she responds, connecting, continuing the conversation. All right, Arowana, what uh, this is where we go. Continuing the conversation is the five W's and the H. If you don't have the five W's and the H, you can't do your job. The five W's are who, what, when, where, why, and how. I used to have this written on my computer that was a script that when I was doing a conversation with someone, I can make sure I was having these questions answered because I'm not going to ask, well, who's buying this house? I'm not asking that way. What I'm going to ask is, Jennifer, are you, uh, is this home for you? Or are you, you're going to be with a partner? Who else is going to get to be 
part of this process. Tell me more about, this sounds very exciting. Tell me more about who all we get to play with, right? And she's going to expound upon that. And then I'm not going straight to who, what. I'm not going to what just right then. I'm going to stay in who in a minute. I'm going to learn. I'm going to communicate. Oh, wow. So you have two kids. Tell me about them. What do they do on a Saturday? Because I'd love to know what kind of yard we're going to need. Or are you looking for a community pool? Or, right? I'm going to lean into the who. I want her to think I am invested in her because you know what? I'm invested in her. <laughs> lean into the who until she feels heard. All right. What? What are we looking for? What are the non-negotiables? What are the must-haves? What are the things that if it has that, you're not going to buy it? Why is that important to you? And then when they tell you those things, again, don't just move on to the next question. Lean into it with them. Why do you want a long driveway? Why is it important to have a laundry room? What do you have now? Who, what, when, when, when are we doing this? Is this next year, next month, this week? Can you go today? That's my favorite question. All right, great. Can you go today? Can we meet up today? I want to be as excited as they are. And I can fit them in for a 15 minute Zoom right now. Now, I believe that's a massive one. I believe that if you can be Johnny on the spot, not to the point where you're just like, I'm going to use the word whoring yourself out. I don't know if that's that's not a proper phrase, but but set boundaries, work it within your schedule. But you can find 15 minutes. You can find 10 minutes to be on a quick FaceTime with them. I just want to see your face. I just want to connect. All right. When are we doing this? Who, what, when? Who, what, when, where? All right. Do we have to be in this particular area? Are you open to these areas? Why that area? What's going on there? That How far do you have to commute? If they're not from your town, do they know it takes an hour from point A to point B? Because they think they want point A, but um, if you're commuting, you're going to need point B. Let's talk, let's talk through that. Who, what, when, where, why? Why are we doing this? Why are you buying this house? Why are you selling a house? That one, live in. Live in that one. The kids have moved out. My mom's moving in. We had a baby. We got a new job. All the things. Live in it. Don't be a therapist, but live in it. Who, what, when, where, where, what, why, why, why? Ooh, why? Ooh, that's so exciting. Celebrate with them. When they tell you they have a new grandbaby and the mom and the baby are coming to live with them, oh my gosh, is that a dream come true? And they're like, oh, it's absolute hell, but we're going to make it happen. Well, look at you. Take them more for the team. And then we get around to the how, who, what, when, where, why, and then how. The five W's and the H. The how. Do you need a lender? Is the inheritance paying for this? When does the inheritance pay out? It's cash? 1031 exchange? Know the questions to ask. Call your lender and say, hey, if I meet someone, what questions do I need to ask them? Who, what, when, where, why, how? If you have those, you have everything you need to move forward. If you leave any of one of those short, you're going to have to go back and ask it again until you lean into it and listen. Questions on those. Is this helpful at all? Cool. Yes. <laughs> Good. Who, what, when, where, why, how? If you don't have one of those, you're stuck. And they're so simple, but they're so important. Why are we doing this? If you don't have the why, you got nothing to push when they get cold feet. This is your clues. This is your leverage. This is your tools. If you don't know when, what am I going to do today? Uh, I Am I jumping on this for Sean? Or am I like, just going to put them on a drip pan pain where I touch them every other month. I need to know, right? All of those. All right. The four C's, the five W's and the H. Two ears. You were created with two ears and one mouth. I believe there's a science behind that. <laughs> Shut your mouth, put your ears on and hear your people. Robin? Yes. Did I hear you? Um, I had only written uh, three of the C's down. The clue, the connect and um, conversation. What was the fourth one? Continuing it, continuing the continuing. connections, continuing the conversations. I like simple little things like this because in my brain, I can even, or even on my pocket, I can have a, even on my calendar, I've written at times four C's. Or if I'm in a listing appointment or if I'm in an impromptu listing appointment in a grocery store or in a, uh, or, or with a buyer's appointment a buyer's in a grocery appointment. store, I know if I can get these four C's rocking, or if I can get the five W's and the H in a conversational manner, now I'm ready to rock and roll. Now, the key that's, to all of this, the, I think, oh, go ahead. Well, go ahead. I was okay. going to say the key, I think, is the conversational manner. Yes. I, coming across with just question, question, question. Yeah, yeah. If you're just like, oh, tell me who, now when, now what, now why, and where, mm -mm, that's not going to work. 
you're their new friend. You're their new call. You're their new confidant. Their new, not confidant really, but your new resource. Here's what you need to know. So I love door knocking. I taught this wonderful man. He's a really sweet guy, introverted fella, how to door knock. He would go do my method where I talk about the four C's and the five W's, not really the five W's, more just the four C's. And then we leave the, the four C's have to happen. And the five W's typically happen in step two, connect. Then the, the next step, step two is the five W's. You might learn some of the five W's and H during the, the first part, but during a door knock, you're definitely just doing the four C's, right? You're going to get some clues. You're going to connect. You're going to just have some nice conversation, right? Here's the piece he missed. He comes to me one day after a month of door knocking. He brings me a book that's like this big, excuse me, a notebook. Because I told him, I was like, after you leave a door, write down all the notes, put it in your database and follow up. And it, and it could be knocked on the door. It had a dogwood wreath and the house looked a little bit beat up. Nobody answered. I left my business card, 412 Loan and Drive, right? So he did that. The part that he didn't do is what? Connect. Well, the, yes. The clue. Exactly. The clue. No, you're exactly right, Mike. He did do the clues. Um, what he didn't do, all, he had this big, big, big notebook. He had no business because he missed the last part of the, the, the instructions, which were to put it in your database and then follow up. So all he had was this cool diary of door knocking. He had done nothing with it. Door knocking is not about advertising your open house. Posting on actually any social, any lead gen is <laughs> not about... Doesn't matter if it's door knocking, if it's Facebook, if it's TikTok, if it's cold calls. It's not about telling about the open house. It's about getting as much information as you can to make a connection, to then make a deal, to make make a get some clues, make a connection, have a conversation, and then keep the conversation going. So he did a whole bunch of work, but he didn't keep the conversation going. The way you keep the conversation going is the follow up. So a follow-up on that, let's say I knocked on the door, nobody answered. There was a dogwood wreath on the door. The house looked a little bit beat up. I wrote down the address. I came home. I put it in my database. All I could put in the database was the address and the notes. I don't know the people's name. I can find the people's name. Where can I find it? Tax records. Tax records. And then I can set a task to follow up. The follow-up task could be a nice little note with a dogwood flower on it. Because I know that they like dogwood flowers, right? It says, hey, I stopped by the other week, weren't home, saw the dogwood. It's one of my favorite trees. If you need something in real estate, let me know. I'd love to connect. Put that in my database, sent a card. This is what it said, follow up. I can do that for a year to follow up with them. I have their address. I could hunt them down on Facebook, right? Hey, I, there is a handyman special coming to town. They're pressure washing all the houses. Don't know if you'd be interested in this or not, but I thought of you. Follow up. How many touches does it take to get a deal? Seven. I hear seven. How many else? I think it's seven. Seven. It has increased. It, when I began saying this statement, it was eight. Now they say it's 12. We quit after two most, most often. They're not interested. You drip or talk to them until they ask you to stop. So I don't like to use the word drip because nobody wants to be dripped on. If I'm sitting right here and there's a drip, what am I going to do? I'm moving. It's annoying as hell. Nobody wants to be dripped on, right? I connect. So I connect and yes, I connect until I get a no. And I love to play the hundred no's game. Hundred no's. This is a challenge you can give yourself today. Your goal is to get a hundred no's. When you get a yes, you have to start over. Dang it. Hmm. A listing appointment. Grr, right? I like to play games. I'm very competitive. So if I have a game, I want to win. So I want a hundred no's. If I get 99, dang it. Just got a buyer's agent. Just got a buyer. Make it fun. What I got. Who wants to poke into any of that or ask questions about any of that? I mean, great information. Uh, how do you track it? What's been your favorite way to track the information? Love it. Love it. Love it. Great question, Pewitt. Is that your real name, Pewitt? Scott. Scott, I'm calling you Pewit from now on. Uh, just, just Pewit. And it reminds me of pew, 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 like Star Wars. Pew, pew. Track it. This, you're going to laugh at me. This is how I tracked it in the beginning. Swear to goodness, this is what I did. I had to deal with myself in the beginning of real estate that I was going to do 20 contacts a day. Non-negotiable. 20 contacts a day, right? If I did not have 20 of these, 
I did not go to sleep. You see that? That's my tracking, but that's not my full tracking. But this is how I held myself accountable. But I did not have 20 little tally marks. And my four desk, it was covered in this for years. That. Poor sweet Wally man, my God bless America husband over there. He It would be midnight. I'm on my machine doing something. What are you doing, babe? I have two more. I didn't do 20. Then, Scott, you put it in your database. You put in as much information as you can. This does not have to be hours of stuff. It shouldn't take more than 30 minutes. Unless you've gotten a yes, then it might because you're going to move to the next step. But in the beginning, 30 minutes, you left a voicemail. Follow up in three days. Left, uh, we spoke. She's not interested. Uh, reach out in a month. That's all you have to do. I used, in the beginning, I used a very simple system called Realty Juggler. KV Core does the same exact thing. I don't know what we're changing to. I haven't followed any of that. But the biggest thing you can do in your database is one, use it. And then two, put the information in and then set a follow-up task. The follow-up task, you should get something on your calendar or you should, when you pull up the system, it should say today's date and here's the things you need to do. I need to talk to Chuck. I need to make sure I reach out to Anne. Michelle and I have not connected in a month. I need to follow up with her, right? It gives you your to-do list. It's your cheat sheet. It's so blooming simple. Put it in there, set a task, do, repeat, repeat. Great question. It reminded me, there was this morning I get up and I'm looking through my list of calls I got to make today and stuff on my calendar. And one of the calls is to... It's a realtor that I talked to back about six weeks ago. And um, you know, we've been talking about, she, she's interested in EXP. She might be moving over here sometime here in the next couple of months. But anyway, she had made note to me or, or she told me when we were talking, um, and it was a cold call when I called her, um, that you know, there's just a lot going on right now. You know, dad's having surgery the last week of September, da, 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 whatever. And again, just like you're talking about, I made a note of that and put it in my database. So on my list, and I told her, I said, hey, real quick, just so you know, keep a list in my phone, just like a, a prayer list, and I will put your dad on there, just so you put all you guys on there. And she's like, oh, wow, that'd be, that's so awesome. Thank you so much, and whatever. So it's on my list today. I'm just going to send her a text. I'm not going to call her. I'm not going to bother, right, right. but just to send her a text, hey, just let you know, I'm thinking about your dad. I hope you're doing well. You know what? Look forward to, to talking again soon. You're definitely praying for you guys. What, just something. You know, That's just, your game I, changer. That's significant. I've learned those little connections like that when you listen and you make note of that and keep track of that. And I've done that for 20 some years now with clients. Right. You get a lead that comes in and you call them and you can and you have that talk and there's something in there. You know, or if you some you find them on Facebook and yep. I don't know, their son just you know, scored a touchdown Friday night at the football game. I'm gonna like a note and then do something. Yeah. Post something about that or congratulate them or whatever. Hey, I saw the post about your son. That's awesome. You know, I love whatever. it. I hope you guys are having a great fall. It's different things like that that you can connect. Exactly. And people. I do that with uh with past clients with send out cards. Yeah. I love send out cards. I do that and man, they eat it up. You just go find the picture of the sun, you send it. And, this was awesome. Good for you. And man, they, and not every single time. That was so great. Thank you for that. Their dog dies. I send it. Their mom dies. I send something. You know, they have a baby. We send something. So yeah. those little things, it will, it will set you apart from every 99% of the realtors out there who are just on to the next deal and finding the next deal. And I got to find the next deal. And it's just, and I get it. We're all looking for the next deal, but it's those connections will get you many deals. Exactly. Is, is what I've seen with it. So good stuff, Robin. Thank you. Thank you. I love that Jennifer Eastburn is like Max Headroom right now. For those of you who are Gen X, you know who Max Headroom is, but she's been doing the whole, her screen's been popping out like Max the whole time. It made me laugh. All right. Anybody else got anything? Thank you for that, Jeff. I have a question. What are your note, what are note cards or what's, what, what is it? What are, what type of note cards do you, can you use? Oh, for send out notes, send out cards. Yeah. So send out cards. I can, I have an affiliate link if you want to check it out. I don't, I think I get paid if you buy things, but I don't, I don't mean to sell it. I'm just telling you that's what I use, but all it is is a program where it's, it's a template. You set up a template and pick a picture. So I'd put a picture of Kathy saying, Hey, thanks for having me. And I put a picture of not her headshot, but like candid of her and her family. And then on the inside, it would say, you know, thanks so much for having me on the call. That made me feel special. And then on the back, it has my picture, you know, of Robin, your favorite realtor. And I would actually send it to her house. So like, it's just, uh, and you can do it all from your phone. It's pretty quick. Most people, if you just text them and say, hey, I'm sending you something, what's your address? They'll shoot it to you. So it's called send out cards. If you want to message me, I'll um, send you my link if you want to try it. 
How do I message you? Uh, um, workplace. Do you do workplace? Yeah. And and what is your name? I'm Robin Mann. M A N N. Robin Mann. M A M A A N N. M A N N. Like a man with two N's. Thank you, Robin. You're welcome. Thank you, Tom. Robin, not a plug for send out cards. I also use send out cards for very much the same reason, plus anniversary, their sale or buy anniversary gifts. Love it. Yes. Love They're it. brownies everybody loves. So if you're looking just for a cheap um, gift. I'll just say that the brownies, believe it or not, is the anniversary gift I have never, ever and I've been doing it probably eight years, 10 years. They love them. I've n they're probably, they call the best brownies they've ever had. <laughs> so I've heard the same. That's I've awesome. Heard. You yeah, talked my, about my... send out cards, Robin. One of the things that came to my mind when you were talking about sending cards, I too have used them, not religiously like you have, but, but I've used them. But it made me think about the door knocking when you were talking about the door knocking and you used the example of the dogwood tree and the and the wreath on their door. Imagine versus just sending a little card, you sent a picture of their mm -hmm. dogwood tree that you just yeah. said is your favorite tree, right? So mm -hmm. again, just that little touch of connection versus just even a handwritten note, like a picture yeah. of open it up and you see the picture of a tree in your yard. Yeah. That's that jumps out anyway awesome. that, it, that came to my mind and i was like see, even those little additional touches make a huge difference well and you know what I, I did not well i did this but i'll tell you the whole story this would be a great thing to do as well especially during the holidays for halloween or for a fall or or christmas any any holidays but I will often as, and I'm, I will do it this year because I've only done it just for pleasure in the past, but now I will turn it into a business opportunity. Uh, typically what I'll do is just take pictures of their front porch or their, or the front of their house or their yard and be like, I'll just post it on my social media. Oh, look at this house. They did this today. I absolutely love it. Well, wow. I can send them a send out card now. No. Dude, I really loved your, your front door, your front yard decor. And now they know I'm a realtor. They know that I love their house. They know I'm a cool person. So thanks for that idea, Kathy. You just yeah. gave me <laughs> drive bys, drive by photos, drive by photos, drop a card. That's mm. great, <clears throat> especially if it's in an area you live or wanting to farm or do yeah, exactly that. Man, that's that's just a money idea. That is a money idea. I like that one. Well, you took it to another level. See, I wasn't thinking there, so you took it to the <laughs> next level. I love it. That's great stuff. I had some people I worked with. It was it was a cold. It was a lead that came in, just a, a buyer lead. They were looking at homes, and I got in touch with them. This is back quite a while ago, but it was eight years before they ended up doing anything. Wow! And it was so funny because they were in just an automated system, and I connected with them. At, you know, I'd call them you know, half the time when they said to call back, and I just was doing all that stuff along the way. And finally, all of a sudden, you know, they called me up like, "Okay, we're ready to." They need to sell their house and then buy the next house and moving up. And it's funny because they just told me, they said, look, you know, our next door neighbor's a realtor. Our best friends at church is a realtor, but there's no way we, we would feel guilty if we used anybody else besides you. Yeah. So I sold their house. They bought another house. And then we ended, we ended up selling that house and they bought another house. We, we've done four deals now over the last, yeah, I've been doing this for 22 years. So it's been Whatever, but it's it's led to fifty thousand in commission just because right. of that follow up and staying in touch and exactly and that communication. Yeah, I have that one that mm -hmm. I I have, I knocked on their door four years ago and we spoke and I really liked them. They liked me and I've just stayed in touch like that through the years. They last year literally I don't know these people from y'all. I'm like I don't know them at all except for that I knocked on the door last year. They're in Germany and they Facetime me. I don't know them. We are not friends. But they FaceTime me and they're like, oh my gosh, Robin, you're going to have to see this. And they show me, like, I have a creepy baby doll collection. They were like, you're, you're, we knew you, we thought of you and blah, blah, blah. And so uh, now we're listed, uh, this past uh, spring, we listed their house. It took four years, but I was just in their brain because I had connected with them. Awesome. So to me, that's what it's about. Hi, Kaylin. Yeah. Thanks for popping on. Hi. I was driving for a little bit, so yeah. I, uh but I have a question about your door knocking methods. So I'm currently really focusing on farming my neighborhood. I farmed it when I first started back in 2019 for a couple years, and then I stopped and now I'm getting back into it. And so I feel like I've, even though I've had a little bit of a break, people still remember me, know who I am. 
But the door knocking thing is not something I've ever been okay with. I just feel like I'm intruding. So how, I guess, what would you suggest for a neighborhood specific thing where I'm probably not totally unknown, but there might be a lot, there's probably a lot of people who don't know me. Love it. Um, Great question. I'm going to say two things in case anyone, I'm totally cool with staying around because I know we started late, but I want, let me answer it. Let me tell this. And then I'm going to answer that. If anybody wants to join me I, and this is a, this is a brokerage agnostic. We do nothing but t- it's called real estate MF. It's Monday through Friday. It's nine 15 to nine 45 AM Eastern. And it's every Monday through Friday. It's a zoom call. We're also live on Instagram and live on TikTok. Uh, you can find the link on um, my Instagram, but it's called real estate MF. 9.15 and 9.45 every Monday through Friday. I'd love for you guys to come on there. We talk legion, we talk accountability, we talk mindset, we talk NAR, we talk everything. So just wanted to put that out there in case anybody had to bolt because I'd love to have folks on there. We've got people from Texas. We've got Dan, Texas and Canada are, well, used to have Seattle, but she had to, it's too early for her. So, but we have people from all over. So anyways, if you want to do that sometime, I'd love to have you there. Instagram so that we can find. Uh, I think it's the Robin man. Let me see. E. Robin. I think it's the Robin man. Let me see. So oh, we're knocking. This is what I would do. E. Robin man, R-O-B-I-N-M-A-N-N, the Robin man. So door knocking uh, a neighborhood that you've, maybe people know you. Here's my deal with door knocking. Thank you, Tim, so much for being here. Here's my deal with door knocking. Same exact thing. You change your mindset. You're not there to get a listing. You're not there to sell you. You are there to learn. You are there to connect. You are there to be a resource. So when I door knock, even if it is to get a listing, the premise that I knock the door with, even if it's an open house, that's just a side note. The premise that I'm knocking the door with is, hey, now I will immediately connect with them. Again, I don't say, hey, I'm Robin Man. I wanted to tell you that. Nope. I say, hey, uh, I'll say, hey, and then I hand in my card, I back up, and then I'm, I, I will, my first thing I will say to them is a connection, either what came out the door or their hair or their glasses or the wreath or the yard or something, right? That is my first script piece. And it requires you finding the clues. That's my first piece. After we converse about that a little bit, the next piece is I'm having an open house in the neighborhood and I'm doing market research or reverse that sentence. I'm doing market research because we're doing an open house. I just listed that house down there. What are the top two things you love about this neighborhood? How long have you lived here? You own your house? Oh, All those things that you need to find out if they're ready to sell their house, you ask in a beautiful conversational manner. What's something you would tell people to not buy the neighborhood? Who's the nosy neighbor that you hate? I'll go knock on their door and see if they'll sell. I say that a lot. (laughs) I'm I'm lucky because I have two nosy neighbors who I happen to be friends with. And one of them came to me back in May and was like, hey, I was talking to the neighbor across the street. She said she's moving. So I did go and walk over there with my little dog. Hey, I just, Colleen said that you might be moving. I just want to let you know. And I, their house, I just sold it last week. It closed. Good job. So I am friendly with the neighbors, but yeah, anyway, go on. So the market, it's a market research thing. I like that. What do you know that I should know? Is there a gas station coming in? Are the schools being rezoned? This is one of my most, like that neighborhood, the German couple that I was telling you about, they, that neighborhood, I literally picked it because it was the neighborhood I wanted to farm. I loved the neighborhood. I loved the price point. I knew it was an older neighborhood that would have some turnover. And so I picked it intentionally. It was close to my home. And so I just started knocking that neighborhood. And yes, they knew me. And I did, I would, I knocked three times a year. Yep. Just me. Pop it in. Here's your popcorn. I was popping by. (laughs) Just make it you. Make it authentic. Bring I'm still going to struggle. But I, I brought, like well, I brought champ- little bottles of mini bottles of champagne. I brought that one one time around for New Year's. Oh, how I, cute. I did that the week after Christmas. But I just thought I'd, and I gave them the choice. They could pick sparklers or champagne. I've sold okay. eight homes in that neighborhood and it's just a tiny little neighborhood. What number of houses tiny? What does that mean? Uh, I would say not even a hundred. Oh, wow. That is tiny. It's just a tiny little neighborhood, but I loved it. It's a great neighborhood. Eight, eight houses. That's great. Cool. Well, if they're not home, did you leave it? Leave those things with a note, or did you just send them a little card after? If they were not home, no, I would not leave an alcohol or a sparkler because you know, shoot. But uh, <laughs> I probably would just pass by and try to knock back again, especially if I had knocked the neighborhood before and knew that they've lived there for twenty years, or they or they've 
they just purchased and they may have family that's going to move to town. Again, I'm looking for the clues. If they're renters, I just leave a note. Hey, I dropped by. I have a little Cersei for you. Text me and I'll bring it by. Because if they text you, what happens? Well, now you got their number. <laughs> and you've been by three other times. So they know you're not just some weird, stupid stalker person. You're, oh yeah, it's that woman that knocks on our door all the time. All right. I, um, I have a question. What are the, uh, what's the last one of the three C's? So the, th the three and four are kind of combined, but look for clues. Right. Connect. And you right. lean into it. And then just more conversation. More. So I, I and yeah, always the open-ended questions. Yeah, tell me more about that. Yeah. Ooh, what's that about? It's good. Anybody else have any final questions? This is great, Robin. Thank you so much um, for, for sharing me. with me. Like you said, it's simple, but so critically important. You know, in our industry, we don't really talk about like truly connecting with people. It's like, hey, you know, here's your script. Here's this. Here's that. In our industry, we don't really talk about truly connecting with people. Here's your script. Here's this. Here's that. Well, you know, we learn all the how to's, but no one really talks about connecting. And so yeah. it's so critical. It is. It will make all the difference. Mm -hmm.